It's time to sit back, relax, and listen to Conversations with Joan. Conversations with Joan will inspire, motivate, and empower you. Live your best life now. Listen, learn, think, and decide. And now, here's your host, Joan Herman. Welcome to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life's Conversations with Joan. I'm Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in. Conversations with Joan focuses on topics that are important to your life, from health and wellness to professional development to personal well-being. Change makers join me to share their insights, tips, and strategies so you can thrive and live your best life now. Thank you for taking time for yourself, and thank you for letting us be a part of your life. Now, let's start talking. We're all going to get older. There's nothing we can do about that. But did you know that you also have a biological age, which scientists can measure by assessing how your genes are expressed through epigenetics? According to today's guest, Dr. Kara Fitzgerald, exciting new research shows that your biological age can actually move in reverse. Dr. Fitzgerald shares a diet and lifestyle plan that shows you how to influence your epigenetics for a younger you. Dr. Fitzgerald lectures globally on functional medicine. She is on the faculty at the Institute for Functional Medicine and maintains a clinical practice in Newtown, Connecticut. She is the author of the book, Younger You, Reverse Your Bio Age, and Live Longer, Better. Welcome, Dr. Fitzgerald. Thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. It's great to be with you today. So, doctor, we're going to get older. That's a fact. Many of us may not like it, but it is inevitable. But you say that even though we're aging chronologically, we can reverse aging biologically. What does that mean? Yeah, so chronological aging, can't do anything about it, number of birthdays we've had. But how fast we're aging physiologically is something that A, we can measure reliably, and B, emerging research, including my study, suggests that we can slow it down or even reverse it. So it's a very, very exciting time in science and medicine. How much of a reverse are we able to achieve? So for example, if you're 55, what can you actually do biologically in reverse? Like where can we go? What's, what's a reasonable expectation? Our study demonstrated that an eight-week diet and lifestyle program reversed biological age in the participants by over three years. So eight weeks, we did a a reversal of over three years as compared to the control group. Um, That is the only study of its kind to date. Uh, There there are a handful of other studies using different interventions over longer periods of time. So there was a a, a trial out of Europe using a year-long Mediterranean diet uh, that they supplied the participants. And there was a very modest biological age reversal in women, in Polish women. So the Italian, it was Italian and Poles in this particular study. And so they showed a little bit of a difference in Polish women, but not in men. I mean, it was sort of interesting, their findings. Um, And then there was another year long study where they used growth hormone injections and metformin, uh, the supplement DHEA and uh, vitamin D. And that study showed about a two year age biological age reversal, actually maybe two and a half, and that was a year-long study. The reality is we're just starting to figure this out. There was actually, and there was one other trial that was 16 weeks looking at obese vitamin D deficient African-Americans. And when they gave them, four, the, the group that was given 4,000 IU of vitamin D had a biological age reversal of 1.85. Uh, And that was over 16 weeks. So I think our results at this point in time are certainly the most impressive, the shortest period and and, and pretty significant biological age reversal um, and the only randomized control study. Uh, But we're just sticking our toe in this pond. So, Joan, it's a really exciting time. And, you know, this time next year, you know, maybe you'll be talking to me again and, you know, we're 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 embarking on a, on a new study now, and we're, we're just going to continue to be reporting. Dr. Fitzgerald, what I think is so exciting about this is that many of us, as we age, we tend to think, you know, I've done all this damage over the years. I, I haven't eaten properly, and I haven't exercised the way I should. And we tend to think that it's too late to do anything about that. But really, what you're showing is it's never too late to reverse what we've done over the course of our lifetime. Yeah, that's right. And arguably, it's, it's- it's essential. It's 
so important. Yes, we do not want to give up. So our study looked at middle-aged uh, men. They were between 50 and 72. So middle-aged, and we were able to do significant biological age reversal. I, I mean, no question, we all want to step in wherever we are in this journey and think about biological age and optimizing it. And I also want to say that the older we are, there's some research suggesting the more bang for our buck we'll get in biological age reversal. There's one really cool study looking at exercise, and we get more you know, benefit as far as our gene expression goes, which is how we measure biological age, than younger people. So definitely no time like the present to start, regardless of who we are, regardless of our health history. You know, we can all jump in and, and participate on this journey. And, and I think we all really need to. In fact, one thing that I'll say, and then I'll, I'll stop, is that we, so we're looking at gene expression to measure biological age. Once upon a time, we thought that our destiny was written in our genes and there was nothing that we could do about it. But science has tipped that paradigm on its head. We now know that gene expression is influenced potently by how we live our lives, what we're eating, uh, what we're doing, what we're thinking, feeling, et cetera. So in fact, we know today that we have a huge say over the quality of our health span the, and the duration of our lifespan. And, you know, we're talking about age reversal, but really what we're saying is that we have the ability through what you teach to prevent and even reverse disease. And, and that's really where it comes into play, like you're saying with epigenetics. So many of us, like, for example, my father passed away of cancer, my mom of heart disease. So those are two things where I could very easily say, I'm predisposed to cancer and heart disease. But what I've learned through the science of epigenetics is that I do have a say to a certain point in, in how this plays out in my own life, and we all do. You have a big say, bigger than you realize. Yes. So I want to back up and say biological age, so how fast we're physically aging, is the biggest risk factor for these chronic diseases, the heart disease and cancer, you know, that your parents experience. So we can think about a couple things. We can think about focusing on biological age and improving the aging journey, and that will, by extension, reduce risk for these, you know, these very ubiquitous chronic illnesses. And, you know... As we do this, we are going to shift gene expression towards a favorable, more anti-inflammatory, uh, more anti-cancer, more antioxidant detox, et cetera. We're going to be shifting our gene expression to kind of support um, optimal health as well. And I want to really emphasize the positive message of, of what you're saying, because, you know, especially coming off of this pandemic where we've all felt so helpless, what you're saying is that we have so much power and control over our health when we pay attention to the things we eat and the, the way we live, our thoughts and so forth. Yes. These, you know, these daily habits, these daily choices are far more impactful than we realized. And I think that's the promise and the responsibility of this new era, you know, of the, you know, of being able to look at our gene expression, you know, the science of epigenetics. There is some responsibility here. We can't say uh, it's all in our genes, you know, that we have no responsibility around the outcome. Or, I mean, we can say that, but it's, it's not true. In fact, we have a great deal to, to say. We have a big role to play in health outcomes. Doctor, we're such a stressed out society. How does stress impact the way we age? Yeah, so we're also, we're a stressed out society and we're a society that's aging faster than other, you know, similarly developed society. So I, I suppose that's no great surprise, right? We tend to do everything faster. <laughs> um, stress, so my read on the literature as far as gene expression and and. Uh, biological age goes, is that stress is a potent promoter of aging, uh, gasoline on the fire of aging. Um, the biological age clock that we used in our study, so the pattern of gene expression that we used in our study, a full 25% of it was dedicated to 
uh, stress responses. So genes that are responsive to glucocorticoids or cortisol, the stress hormone, a full 25%. There was no other contributing factor as potent as stress, you know, in my read on, on this clock. We have to take our stress experience very seriously. A lot of us say, oh, I'm so stressed out. You know, there's nothing I can do about it. I mean, I have to work. I have to do this and da, 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 and the kids and, you know, there's not enough money. And, you know, there's a, a litany. We're almost powerless over this stress experience. But, you know, all of us can shift it. We can take a minute, two minutes to just turn the volume down. And I think if we understand how essential it is um, that we can do that. So we know that stress drives aging forward. But there's also really cool science showing that meditation, Tai Chi, yoga, you know, really healthy practices reverse biological aging. And it doesn't, we don't have to be experienced. We don't have to go live in the monastery in the mountains. Just one episode of meditation in an, in an inexperienced practitioner has favorable changes on gene expression. And so if we keep doing it, it, it can contribute to a reduction in biological age. Has anyone studied the way our children are aging? We have a generation of kids who are more obese than ever before. They're not as active. You know, they, they're experiencing diabetes, high blood pressure, things that you don't yeah. normally find in children. You know, what's happening to them? Yeah. I, I worry about them in the future. Yeah. So there's interesting science here. Uh, in fact, that has been looked at. And yes, it is a pro-aging phenomena and an appropriately pro-aging phenomena. Um, our kids, so we're supposed to age fast when we're little, you know, when we're babies or, you know, our children age fast. I mean, remember back to your kids when they were babies and infants, it was like they were learning new words by the second, or you could see them with a new physical skill so fast or you know, I look at my daughter when she, you know, bangs herself falling or something and she's, he, she healed. It's like, I can watch her skin, you know, just knit itself back together. They're, they're extraordinary. They're developing and they should be at this breakneck pace. We, th there can be a developmental delay that's driven by um, epigenetics when abuse is there or when there's a lack of affection or insufficient nourishment. So we can see a delay. But then, you know, as kids get older, and they adopt some of the bad habits that, you know, the, the Western lifestyle uh, can uh, usher in, we can see a phenomena that looks more pro aging in a negative way. So then what are some things that we can be doing daily swaps to turn all of this around to age in, in a better way it, for our children and for ourselves? I would argue that we all that we want to be eating for our genes at any age. It doesn't have to be huge uh, sweeping changes, and a lot of this is intuitive. So, processed foods, not surprisingly, you know, high carbohydrate, sugar rich foods aren't healthy on gene expression at all. We want a whole foods diet. We want it to be vegetable centric fruits are in there but we don't want high sugar fruits lots of those dark berries the polyphenols the colorful aspects of fruits and veggies are so essential for good gene expression but we also want nutrients um, we call them methyl donors so the polyphenols sort of direct what's happening on gene expression. And then we want the ingredients of good gene expression that come from foods like, uh, again, greens, nuts and seeds, eggs are really important, beets. Um, and if folks are open to it, a little bit of liver. In our study, we prescribed three servings of liver per week. Uh, and I know some people will balk at that, but liver is a rich, important multivitamin in a food matrix. So if you could bullet point the things we should be doing and the things we should be avoiding, what would that takeaway be? Whole foods diet, avoid processed foods. So eat a whole foods diet, avoid processed foods. Do some exercise most days of the week. Avoid being sedentary. 
avoid over-exercising. Take a minute to de-stress, whatever that looks like for you. Don't allow the stress experience to dominate and overwhelm you all of the time. Step out of that. Sleep. (laughs) Sleep is essential for healthy epigenetic expression. Pay attention to what you need to do to get a good night's sleep. I outline all of the hacks that I've used to ensure that I get a good night's sleep most nights. Doctor, listening to you make this list, these are things that most of us know we should be doing. Why do you think we don't? Well, you know, I think that we, I think that that, that the whole agribusiness, I mean, I think our our culture shifted, you know, a, a long time ago towards a modernization um, that's antithetical to health. Like we moved away from eating this way. I mean, we certainly evolved eating this way and being this way, sleeping, exercising, movement was a part of life. Uh, And as we entered into the so-called modern era, um, we just omitted a lot of these foundational practices uh, from our lives. I think, you know, industry has certainly stepped in to make a lot of money off us, make a lot of money off of prepared foods, um, you know, foods of lesser quality. Uh, I think it's just, I think it's multifactorial. You know, and certainly in medicine, being a physician, uh, we didn't appreciate the level of the importance of nutrition. You know, modern medicine really kicked nutrition to the curb, kicked diet to the curb uh, for the sake of, you know, drugs and procedures, et cetera. Uh, we're now obviously realizing that that was you know, a deep error that we're going to be paying for for a long time. And we, and we really need to turn the paradigm back to, you know, an earlier time. There's so much talk these days about boosting immunity and everything you're teaching is what should be shouted from all of the rooftops. Yeah, that's right. So we know people who are most vulnerable to the ravages of COVID are people who are aging biologically faster. Um, so, yes. All of these interventions will help us uh, optimize our our immune response, without question. The book is Younger You, Reverse Your Bio-Age and Live Longer Better. If you'd like to get more information about Dr. Fitzgerald and her work, you can visit drcarafitzgerald.com. That's D-R, drcarafitzgerald.com. Doctor, in about 30 seconds or less, what's the takeaway? We can get younger. And it's really our responsibility to engage in it. So let's get younger together. Amen. I'm on board with you. Dr. Fitzgerald, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. It was a pleasure to be with you. Thank you for joining us. I hope you found the show informative. At Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life, we believe that knowledge is power. Take what you've learned, apply it, and live your best life now. Remember that the information provided is the opinion of our guest and should never replace the advice of a professional who knows your personal situation. If you'd like more information, visit our website, cyacyl.com. That stands for Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. While on our site, listen to past shows on demand, read the digital magazine, sign up for our mailing list, and be sure to follow the show on social media. Until next time, this is Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in.